In this video, we're going to explore the integral of cos of x e to the x, which can be handled by integration by parts. However, it's going to require a little bit of thought for how to correctly apply it or how to effectively apply that approach. Let's take a quick look at how we would start this. If we're going to use integration by parts, we need to separate the integral into the u and dv part. The dx always goes with the dv. And here it's not clear what would be a more effective choice to put the cosine with the u and differentiate it and then integrate e to the x or differentiate e to the x and integrate cos of x. If we don't know for sure when we're starting, let's just take the easiest way, which is cos comes first, let's make it our u. For your own reference, it actually does not matter which way you choose these elements. Having picked our u and dv, we now turn the crank, we go through the integration by parts process by taking the derivative of u, which gives us negative sine of x, and we integrate the dv part, which gives us v equals the integral of e to the x dx, so e to the x again, and there should be a dx here as well for the du part. drawing our lines to remind ourselves of the formula. And we call our integral over all i for simplicity so we don't have to keep copying it. Our integral is equal then to u times v, cos of x e to the x, minus the integral of e to the x times negative sine of x dx. And that would benefit from some tidying of the signs, positive negative signs that is here, cos of x plus the integral of sine of x e to the x. Now in some sense, we have not changed our original integral or exchanged our original integral for a simpler integral. In fact, it appears we've just replaced the cos with a sine, which is not simpler. However, there is a feeling that if we did this again, we might get back to where we started. Given the note at the top here that this is a circular case for integration by parts, let's try that. Let's we'll do integration by parts again and see what we get if we do that same integral one more time. We're going to let u equal the sine part before we let it be the cos, that's fine. And the dv be e to the x dx. When we do that, we get the derivative of sine, which is positive cos of x dx. And integrating here, we get v equals the integral of b to the x, which is just e to the x again. Our little mnemonic reminder here. So our integral, going from this line here, it is equal to cos of x, e to the x, plus, now we have this integral, which we are using the integration by parts formula on, so sine of x, e to the x, minus the integral of e to the x, v du, cos of x, dx. Now that does not seem like progress because we're actually back to where we started. However, let's write this on the next page and see if there's something we can work with. So what we have is the integral of cos of x times e to the x can be replaced by these two expressions minus the integral of cos of x e to the x dx. We've seen something like this before with the derivative of arctan and some other calculations where we've built an equation which involves the thing that we want to solve for. What we have is the integral we want, and we have the integral we want in the same equation. What we can do then is isolate the integral of cos of x e to the x dx. How do we do that? Well, notice there's a minus sign here, so if we bring that to the other side, we are going to get exactly two of 
the integrals of cos x e to the x dx. And we leave the right-hand side the same. All we're doing is rearranging like a normal equation, as long as we don't forget to put all the ingredients back in. Cos of x e to the x plus sine of x e to the x. And in the next line, we see our final result. What is equal to the integral of cos x e to the x? Well, it happens to equal cos of x e to the x plus sine of x e to the x all over 2. So in this case, we were never able to do an antiderivative of the integral we wanted, but we were able to create an equation that had that integral in it. Once we have an equation with the integral in it and other functions, then all we have to do is isolate that integral and we get a formula for the antiderivative. It still used integration by parts along the way, but we achieved the cal the it still used integration by parts along the way, but the final conglomeration or the final result was arrived at by manipulating the equation rather than doing a final antiderivative step. Same approach, slightly different process towards the end, but still based on that tool of integration by parts.